This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cavins. Of course, it's brought to you by Prize Picks, largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Download the app today. Use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. And check this out. Prize Picks doing a cool thing this weekend. They have a free square for UFC 303 this Saturday night. Alex Pereira has to get more than uh, 0.5 significant strikes, and that square will win. I will tell you, as a UFC fan, you have a great chance of that happening. I'd say it's pretty much a 99% guarantee that Pereira lands a significant strike, and it probably happens within the first 15 seconds of this fight. Uh, also, take the guesswork out of buying NFL tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code CLNS for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, Greg, we're going to take a look at this team right now and the projected starters go position by position and see how we feel. Better, the same, or worse about said position. Let's start at quarterback Jacoby Brissett. So these are just to um, give people a background. So these are our projected starters, not, um, yes. I mean, I guess maybe there are projected starters somewhere, maybe on Patriots.com. I don't know. But these are sort of our choices for uh, the opening day starter. And uh, I have Jacoby Brissett. Um, I think the odds are pretty strong that he starts at least uh, opening week, if not a significant portion of the schedule. I, I feel better about where, Jacoby Brissett is compared to where the Patriots finished the season. Of course, you know, Mac Jones was on the bench. Bailey Zappi was starting. Um, we all know about the debacle. I just think that that <clears throat> Jacoby Brissett, with his background in this offense, um, his ability to limit the turnovers, um, the ability to use his legs when needed, I think that, um, and it might not be – the first week of the season, but I think um, eventually he will give them more stable quarterback play. And that's really what this team needs. They need to hang on to the ball, um, both in terms of turnovers and time of possession. And if they do that, then they should be in a lot of these games. And I think that's all we're really looking for out of these Patriots. The bar is low. Brissett's better. I mean, come on. Bailey Zappi, Mac Jones last year. Give me a break. All right, Ramondre Stevenson last year, Ramondre Stevenson this year. Yeah, I feel better about it um, because of, uh, you know, he's got the contract thing out of the way. He's come back a little bit more trimmed down. I think he's uh, he's up the the muscle and eliminated the fat and sort of changed his body a little bit. And I think you're going to see a little bit of a of a better burst out of him. I don't know if he's necessarily going to give you more in the passing game than, you know, what he normally does in terms of just, you know, check downs, the occasional screens and stuff like that. But I think he's going to be a little bit more explosive. So I feel better about Ramondre Stevenson going into the season. I'm at the same level. I want to see how the lighter version looks when you get the pads on and, you know, the yards after the contact, he's always been kind of great spinning out of tackles. Does that remain the case? Can he stay healthy? Uh, with with a little bit a little bit less weight, so I'm pretty much same level with uh, Ramondre. All right, we we'll look at the uh, pass receiving back. We go, I would guess Ezekiel Elliott. We could say third down back mm -hmm. here, and you've got Antonio Gibson this year. Yeah, so I feel better about it. Not that you know, I think that um, I think that Ezekiel Elliott was a you know good player for them yeah. um i thought you know i was a little bit surprised that he lasted as long as he did on the market but i think most people probably figured he would go back to dallas which he ended up doing i thought he was a i thought he was a better backup um you, you know role sharing sort of running back than he was out of the backfield but he was pretty good out of the backfield you know good good hands not a whole lot of burst uh but you know, would shake a few tackles. But from what I've seen from Antonio Gibson so far, um, I really like him. I think he's he's a little bit better, um, a little bit more um, agile than Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah. Um, you know, better hands, can catch a variety of passes, not just swing passes. You can get them uh, on the wheel. You can match him up with a, with a, uh, a linebacker. And he might be able to do some things. Now, it's not going to be James White or something like that. But I do think it's an upgrade. So I, I feel better about that. 
I'm with you. I, I think Gibson brings that more explosivity than Zeke did. You mentioned all the different things he could do as a receiver. He was a receiver in college, so he's a better pass catcher. He's a more versatile pass catcher. I think he's a great fit for this system in AVP. So I feel better about that position like you do. Tight end one, Hunter Henry. So I feel a little bit worse about this um, just because, you know, Hunter's getting up there in age. Um, you know, I, I certainly thought he was worthy of bringing back on a contract because they didn't have anybody else at the position. Right. But um, I wouldn't say he blew me away or anything this offseason um, while other guys, while other tight ends on the roster were getting open for things, uh, for, for receptions, red zones, things like that, you know, whether it's Austin Hooper or Jaheim Bell or even Petway, um, Wilcox a little bit towards the end. Um, you didn't see a whole, a ton from Hunter Henry. So that, that, that gives me some pause. Um, I got a BSJ member question where somebody was saying that, you know, I, I wrote or said on the podcast that, um, I thought that, Hunter Henry might have lost a step and he was basically like and the member was like explain and like I, I mean I don't know what to tell you it's not like I can produce video for you and il illustrate it with off-season practices it's just you're gonna have to trust um, you know what I'm seeing and again it's just a sort of a uh, off the hip observation obviously I'm not sitting there studying Hunter Henry so I can't definitively tell you he's lost a step but I, I thought that um, you know, I, I some of it was the offense um, last year. Uh, we all know what he did in his first year with Mac Jones. And, you know, he was really good. And his production has gone down since then. A lot of that was probably the offense and what was going on with the quarterback position, and the offensive coordinators and all that. But just I, I thought that in this offense, which is pretty tight end friendly, I thought I'd see a little bit more out of Hunter Henry in the offseason practices, and I didn't. So that's why I feel a little bit worse about it. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's a veteran. He's been a trusted and dependable guy. He's coming off of an injury. He's working with a new offense. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt until about August. So I'd say I feel the same, uh, subject to change. If uh, this continues what you saw at minicamp, then I, I would have a problem. But for right now, I'll give him the uh, benefit of the doubt of the veteran. All right, uh, Pop Douglas. So just to give people background, I, I look back to last year. So the snap percentage in order at wide receivers went Devontae Parker, Pop Douglas, Juju Smith-Schuster, Kendrick Bourne, and Jalen Ragor. Mm. Um, so I am projecting not really wide receiver one, but I think he, I, I think Pop's going to get the most action. Yeah. Um, Maybe not in terms of snaps, but I do think I I was very impressed with him uh, where he, he sort of uh, built off of what he did last year as a rookie. Um, I thought he was he had a very impressive rookie campaign once he got out there. I think he's going to be even better. Hopefully these coaches know how to utilize him. Hopefully the wide receivers coach Tyler Hughes is good. Um, but I feel better because of what I saw from Pop. Uh, during the offseason practices, and I think, you know, he's only going to go up. I agree. I feel better. He's now seasoned, as they say, a year under his belt. I don't think he'll be looking over his shoulder as much, especially what happened early in the season last year. I mean, we forget the Miami fumble, and then he was pretty much a forgotten guy for a few weeks there. So I, I think he's going to be given the opportunity with this coaching staff, even if he does have a misstep or two, I think he's a good football player, and he's got more help around him. The, the receivers, to me, overall are better. It's a better situation. So I expect him to be better this year than last, as long as he stays healthy, which with head stuff, we never know. All right, KJ Osborne slash Juju is how, how you had this one listed. Yeah, so I guess I would put this as you're basically comparing it to Devontae Parker um, yeah. from last year. And so I I like I – like, a lot of what I've seen from both players. All right. Maybe not a lot, but I've liked what I've seen out of both players. I like KJ's a uh, professional. He's been in the scheme. He knows what he's doing. I like his profile, I like his athletic ability. I don't like the way he catches the ball. He's been struggling to catch the ball. That's always an issue. It was an issue. For, it's always an issue for a wide receiver. It, you know, if, if you can't catch the ball, that's sort of 
Job one. Um, yeah. And so he had an issue with this last year in Minnesota. We all thought that was the uh, anomaly for him because normally he's been a pretty sure-handed guy. But last year and now this offseason, you're starting to wonder if he's in sort of some sort of slump. And Juju, I mean, I, I just don't know whether he's going to be here at the end of the day. So, I, you know, this is comparing basically K.J. Osborne to Devontae Parker. Um you know, I put worse, but I would say I feel about the same. Um, everybody knows I wasn't the biggest Parker fan. and But, you know, he did come up with some plays at times. And, of course, he dropped some big plays at times and then uh, didn't want to take responsibility for it. So, you know, the whole catching thing, it, it's pretty even right now to me. So I'm going to say the same for this spot. Yeah, I mean... Uh... I probably rest somewhere around the same, but I do think there's room for growth if Osborne can figure things out. And uh, if the drop sees are not that big of an issue, then he would be, to me, a no doubt upgrade over what you had last year. So hopefully he irons that out. And we're not even going to talk about Javon Baker. So maybe he can show up in training camp. That's another option here. Uh, so, but I would rest on the same right now. Let's get to uh, one more receiver. I don't know how you want to split this up as far as who you're comparing him to, but Jalen Polk. Yeah, so I guess if we've done Parker and Douglas, I guess this would be the Juju slash Bourne spot uh, from last year. And we all know that, you know, Kendrick Bourne's coming back from an ACL. We're probably, he's probably going to start the season on Pup and we'll have to see what happens with him. But I feel better. I mean, it, anybody who's listened to this podcast or read me knows how I feel about Jalen Polk and what I've seen on the field from him. Um, I, I think he's going to be really good. I, I I think he's he's got a chance to be, uh, at least statistically, one of the best rookie receivers for the Patriots in, in some time. I just think he's, he's uh, Jacoby Myers with much bigger upside and uh, very sure-handed, tough, smart, knows what he's doing. Um, I love Jalen Polk, and so I feel a lot a, a lot better about the third wide receiver spot going into this year. I'm with you. More complete, more competitive. Uh, I love his makeup. He's produced on the field. He's got unbelievable hands. So I, I would uh, I would feel much better about Jalen Polk than really any receiver from last year outside of maybe Pop Douglas. Who doesn't love going to an MLB game during the summer, especially with the Red Sox turning things around the ballpark? has always been home to me and my family, and we'll definitely get there at some point, and we'll use Game Time to get us there. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, view from your seats, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I, I got to tell you, I've been on the app. I buy tickets. We're going to go to a Red Sox game. I think in a couple weeks, I went through game time. I love how you can see the views from all the seats in the venue. That's that, especially at Fenway with obstructed view and all that stuff. That's a must for me. I need to know where I'm sitting. I need to know what the view is. I don't want to be, you know, pointed towards center field when everything's going on to my right and have to be in traction for the next week. So I love the game time app. Uh, for giving me that view because I have to have it. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Let's finish up the offense up front. Greg, we'll look at the O line. Left tackle, a core four versus Trent Brown. At first, I wanted to give it to Trent Brown, and I do think Trent Brown, um, for all his Trent Brown-ish, um, <laughs> has, has been a, you know, he, he when he was there and he wasn't in the Matt Patricia offense, he was, you know, pretty solid. Of course, you know, there's a lot of other things to come with Trent Brown. Yeah. But in terms of, like, you know, starting the season and playing, um, you know, I like Trent Brown. I think he's good. I think his size, his length uh, causes a lot of issues for edge players in the NFL. Um, 
you know, a core four. I liked what I've seen out of him so far. I know internally they like what they've seen out of him so far, but we haven't seen him in pads yet. And who knows? Maybe maybe he's not tough enough at the end of the day. We don't know. We, you don't know that until the pads go on. Yeah. And so right now it's a it's a bit of a mystery what they're going to get out of him. But I would say I would say I feel about the same starting the season with a core four. That's being a little generous um, because there are a lot of questions about him. And T- Trent Brown, you kind of knew what you were going to get and you got that um, the whole the whole thing. So. But I'm going to say I feel about the same uh, right now at that spot. I feel worse because I don't know what Chooks is going to be. At least I knew Yo. who Trent Brown was, better or worse. I knew what I was getting into, right? The good and the bad of him. So I would go worse just because the jury is still out on a uh, core four. Also still out as we record on Karen Reed. Anyway, uh, let's go <laughs> to the left guard spot. City So. Against, you would say, are, are you going to look at this as position or as the player? I'm going to look at this as the position, so it would be Cole Strange okay. that we are comparing him to. Um, you know, I liked a lot of what I saw out of, out of City So last year. Um, I wouldn't say that he's come in and shown like a different level. Um, I wouldn't say he's especially bigger or quicker or anything like that. Um, we all know. Cole's sort of limitations and you know the more he played the better Cole was yeah um I have the same worry though with both guys especially in this division with a lot of big strong defensive tackles Cole Strange had a lot of issues with those guys I could see City so because he he's also sort of light in the took us as you would like to say um the the same as Cole so I'm worried that they're going to have the same limitations there. So I'm going to go with the left guard spot. I'm going to say I feel the same about where the Patriots were last year. I feel better because of Cole Strange's injury history and the fact that he went down at the end of last year. So I feel better about the left guard spot. So played left guard in college. So he gets back to his collegiate position. He's got the same thing like Pop Douglas, a little bit more seasoning. And I would hope and expect better coaching from Scott Peters than what we got from Adrian Clem last year. So I'm going to say I feel a little bit better about so than strange. David Andrews. So this is going to hurt a little bit, and I don't want people to take this out of context because everybody knows how I feel about the captain, David Andrews, and about the type of player he's been. And I'm so glad that he's back and hasn't had uh, decided to retire because I do think he's a really good pre- player. I think he's completely underrated. I think he's underappreciated even around here. However, um, I feel slightly worse about this. And I'll just the, the only reason is I haven't seen him in the scheme. And this scheme puts a lot more on the center. Uh, the, the old Patriots scheme was a lot more on the quarterback in terms of protections and changing plays and all that stuff. And the center was basically a sidecar. The center runs the deal up front in this scheme. So that's a change. Not that I don't think David Andrews can do that. I totally think he can do it. I just haven't seen it yet. And the other thing is, this is a zone blocking scheme. And I wrote about this earlier this week, um, to, talking about the offensive line and talking to people around the league. And there are a lot of concerns that they don't that they don't have the right types of offensive linemen to run this zone blocking scheme, which is more predicated on athletic linemen, smaller athletic, get out, get angles, things like that. And I that's I don't say that that's it's not it's not a weakness for David Andrews. It's just, you know, we haven't seen him do it yet. But I do have a lot of confidence in David Andrews. I always have, but until I see it, I feel a little bit worse about this spot this year. I'm rolling with the same. That might be boring, but I'm going same with David Andrews just because I think he's got a high football IQ. I think this is going to kind of rejuvenate him a little bit this year, and he's just mm-hmm. solid. So I'm going to say the same for uh, for David Andrews. All right, right guard. We've got uh, <laughs> right now, as of June 28th, 2024, as we record this, it is uh, Michael Wenu last we saw at right guard. So I guess we'll we'll just kind of project him to be right guard for now. So you're going Owenu versus City So. Yeah, I think that um I think that Owenu 
I think that he's going to start at right guard. I think they want to get Caden Wallace on the on the field. Um, there's the whole yin and yang with that. I mean, I, from what I understand from talking to people, his move from left tackle to right tackle is not about him like busting at left tackle. It's actually um, they like what they've seen out of him, but it's just, you know, what do you do? You see this a lot. I mean, even the Patriots with, you know, Matt Light, Matt Light started at right tackle and then moved over um, to left sack, uh, left tackle. Nate Solder started at right tackle. He was drafted to be a future left tackle to succeed Matt Light. And so a lot of teams do this where they put their, uh, you know, their ta- they, they would rather get the tackle on the field and sort of, in their mind, upgrade the talent, the best five, get them on the field. Um, so right now I have a winnie at right guard. Um, if you're comparing it to City So, obviously this is better. Um, just in general, I'm more comparing, and I'm, Obviously, changing the criteria uh, for different positions to suit my own <laughs> agenda. The rules halfway through. Exactly. So I'm comparing Awenu to himself, and I feel slightly worse about it. I don't. I don't think he reported in the greatest of shape. Again, that's my opinion. Um, I don't have any definitive proof. Yeah. For you, um, just you know what I've seen. Um, and there are, I can tell you, there are internal concerns about whether Michael Wenu, now that he's gotten the big contract, whether he's going to be the same player. There's a, there is a feeling, um, from people, uh, you know, around the team that they think he's the type of guy who doesn't 100% love football. And now that he's sort of arrived with the paycheck, you know, maybe it's not as good. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying that's a concern and something we're going to have to look out for uh, going into this year. But I do. Th- I, so for those reasons, I feel slightly worse about Michael Winnie this year compared to last year. Sticking with the initial criteria, I'm going to say a is better than city. So rookie right guard versus one of the best what? guards in football. So I'm going to go with the and feel better about him as far as the weight. We'll see. Uh, maybe we'll get Bedard out there uh, first day of, of training camp with a scale and see if he can get a Wenu to stand on it. <laughs> see how that conversation <laughs> goes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Look at right tackle. I well, we, we, we ended the year last year with Michael Wenu at right tackle. Now we're projecting Caden Wallace to be the guy. How's that comp work for you? Yeah, so obviously Wallace – uh, compared to Michael Wenu, I feel a lot worse. And, and Michael Wenu looking for a big contract and extension or free agency or what have you, um, uh, I feel worse about that. I'm, I'm more comparing Caden Wallace to Vidarian Lowe, who got a lot of snaps there um, last year. Um, that was a bit of a train wreck, but I, I think that – you would like to think that Caden Wallace can't do any worse than that. I, I, I'm not so sure. I need to see this. I need to see this kid in pads. Um, there's There are toughness questions about him. Um, we'll have to see whether that's true or not. Um, but, you know, for, for right now, I'm saying I feel about the same at right tackle. For right now, I'm feeling worse because I don't know what Wallace is going to be. I, I hope he can figure it out and obviously played a ton of right tackle at Penn State. Maybe he'll end up being good, hopefully, but I don't know until I see him out there in training camp. So I've got an unknown rookie in Wallace versus a Wenu, and a Wenu was at least average at right tackle. So I, I'd say I feel worse. All right, let's jump to the other side of the football. Defense, Demarcus Covington, new defensive coordinator, running that side of the ball. We start on the edge. Matthew Judon, Keon White. Yeah, so I have them as a platoon and a platoon on the other side. Um, Matthew Judon, we'll have to see what ultimately happens with him. Um, if it's just Keon White, um, I don't know if I feel as good, even though I think he had an awesome offseason, and I think he's going to be a beast this year. But um, I'll just say that the tandem of Matthew Judon and Keon White, and if they keep them all on the same roster, which I think the odds are probably pretty good, I think they – they want to beef up the defense. It's Mayo's baby, you know, keep them in games, all that stuff. So I don't, I, I, the chances of Judon getting dealt, I don't think are great, but you, I don't think you can uh, totally, um, you know, look past that possibility. But if they stay the same with, uh, I would say Keon White's sort of the starter. If you remember last year before um, Matthew Judon's injury, 
uh, at least in the first halves of games or most of games, they took some of his early down load off to keep him more fresh. I could see that again where Keon White is on the edge um, for first and second down or something like that. And then on third down, Matthew Judon comes in, White kicks inside, Devon Godchow comes off the field. Um, so for that, sort of platoon situation I feel better because Matthew Judon is going to be back healthy hopefully he's motivated and Keon White has definitely improved and I think is in a better spot to utilize his athletic talents I feel better I'm expecting a step forward for White I can't wait to watch him play with pads on I can't wait to see him get going all right defensive tackle Christian Barmore got the big contract love Barmore thought he was great last year um, from what I hear, there are a lot of concerns about his knees, uh, about his knee uh, that has given him issues. Um, I, I just don't know. I, he certainly has the potential to improve on what he did last year. I just don't know if that can be the expectation. Um, I don't have any concerns about him and his contract. Um, I think that he will be as hungry as ever. Again, that's just a gut instinct of mine. I don't have any uh you know, ready facts to present on that. But I just, just from what I've observed of him in his time as a Patriot, I feel really good about him continuing to work hard and all that stuff. But I just don't know with his durability concerns, whether he can definitely improve on last year. It would be huge for the Patriots if he does, but we'll have to see. So I'm going the same for Christian Barmore. I can't predict injury. So I'm going to say better. I, I feel slightly better about Barmore because I do think he has that other level I, I think he's got another step right now pro football focus has him between like 10 and 15 ranked on interior defensive linemen across the league I think he could absolutely get into the top five to ten I think he's got that next step in him so uh I'm gonna, I'm gonna say slightly better about Barmore uh Devon Gotchow so You know, I think that at this point in time, I think we know who Devon Gotchow is and what you get out of him. You'll get a couple of special games every year. You'll get some dog games out of him. Um, You get pretty consistent play, I would say, outside of that. Um, But to me, I'm going to put it slightly worse because of his contract situation. And, you know, I think this is this is real. He's already been on Twitter like talking about it about how you know want something fair is that going to happen what's that going to look like what kind of precedent does that that set I think it's a very tenuous time and I don't know I can't tell you when he's going to be on the practice field I could definitely see a hold-in situation how's that going to affect him it didn't work out for Judon last year so I'm slightly worried about this whole all right, I'm more than slightly worried. I'm worried about this situation. And so for that reason, I feel worse about nose tackle going into this year. It's interesting because it, it could go either way, right? The contract year can kind of bog him down. He can be miserable and have a down season. Or it could be a contract year. He could be pissed, be motivated, chip on the shoulder, say, screw you to the Patriots. I'm going to go out there and ball and then leave you in free agency. Uh, I'm going to be optimistic. I don't know why. Uh, but I'm going to go slightly better, maybe because I believe that Mayo will, will will get the best out of him and, and they'll be able to talk him down a little bit and get him focused. It really does depend on the contract, though. So uh, I don't know how he's going to approach this. If he's going to be the curmudgeon and just be peeved all year, not in a good way, then it could end up being a disaster. Hopefully it motivates him and he wants to prove to the football world he's worth one last big payday. All right, let's get to uh, the opposite edge. We've got Anthony Jennings and Joshua Uche. Yeah, so, Nick, one thing I wanted to ask you, because um, <clears throat> as people know from my last podcast, I've been in travel ball hell this summer. <laughs> um, so I haven't exactly uh, kept up on everything. I did get a BSJ member question this week about they basically said that, like, Josh Uche is complaining about his contract after he just signed the, you know, the, the short one year deal with the Patriots. And, and I don't know if you know anything more about it. It was the first I had heard of it. I texted Giardi today about it, and he pointed to Mike Reese mentioning Josh Uche on Sunday as part of sort of the contract squabbles going on have have, do you know anything more on this the only thing i've seen is the same thing as giardi said which was uh mike reese on sunday writing 
kind of hinting towards, oh, he he handled mandatory minicamp differently than a guy who just signed a, a you know, a, an extension, kind of an extension, if you want to call it that. I, I don't know, a one year deal. And looking at how he was handled that camp and and hinting towards the idea that he might have some issue. But it's actually something I've been trying to figure out. And maybe you can help me out on this. If a guy signs in March, he can't redo his deal right away, can he? It, it, isn't there some kind of rule that stops him, prohibits him from from circling back? Because I, I would imagine that that would be a huge loophole. Why, why would why would teams not sign guys to like one year deals and then circle back three months later and be like, oh, surprise, the guy that we gave a one year deal three months ago, we're going to give him a five year deal at a hundred million. There's got to be some kind of rule, right? Yeah, I think I think that's correct. I think um, there's some sort of uh, time period where you can't do anything to somebody's contract. But I also I don't want to say definitively because I do think there are certain types of contracts, whether the, depending on the language that you could um, do something. But, um, you know, my reaction to this is like two tough noogies like yeah. you had every opportunity and according there were reports that he turned down a lot more money to stay here and i think he only came back for like one year like four million dollars yeah something like that it was the biggest shock to me of the whole offseason for the patriots i was like what josh who like we've seen guys whether it's like mark anderson you know 10 years ago you know one year he comes in he's an edge rusher and all he's a situational guy and buffalo paid him through the nose and of course uh, that was a terrible contract. We all knew it was going to be. Um, but like he had his chance to fly the coop. And, you know, my read on it was he didn't love the offers. And so he figured, hey, I'll I'll stay one more year in this role. I know what I'm getting. I know what I'm getting with the coaches. And maybe I try to hit it big again. But, um, you know, there could be a little maintenance at play here where he's just like, all right, I signed, but I'm not going to kill myself yeah. for – $4 million this year. I'm going to make, I'm going to make some business decisions along the line. So that should be interesting. But in general, at this spot with Jennings as the run defender, Uche as the pass rushing uh, platoon, uh, I feel about the same because I thought both of those guys were really good last year. And maybe Uche's stats weren't quite as good as they have been. It's still pretty damn good. So I feel really good about that platoon on that side. I agree with you. I, I feel the same. How about uh, Jawan Bentley? So Bentley, um, my only concern with Bentley, so I feel better to start the season because I, I do think, I think he he wears down as the season goes along. Like they need to, and maybe Taki Taki being here can help take some reps from him. Uh, Raekwon McMillan's back. He can help, but, you know, as we, you know, Jawan Bentley has been really good for about a half um, two thirds of the season. And then he sort of trails off because just too many reps, too many injuries. It's a tough position. Um, a lot of Knicks, but, um, you know, I like Bentley. I've always, you know, I want better at the position and faster, but, um, you know, I feel generally about the same. I think he's underrated as far as what he does for this football team. You could argue that he's been one of their better players the last couple of years. Uh, I like the speed element, though, that I think they do have because they, they have at least options there, Greg, this year. I, at least I feel that way going in with Taki Taki and with hopefully Mapu. I, I know they have him in the safety room, but even if he can give you a couple of snaps and bring that athleticism. So they at least have options to improve their speed at the second level if they want to do that, given the matchup. But I, I feel the same about Bentley. How about Jelani Tavai? So um, I I feel slightly worse just because um, he's missed a whole off season coming back from a surgery and also I I don't think and it's not a knock on him or anything like that I just don't think he can be any better than he's been I mean he's been really good he's been really good the past two years in his role I I wish they would play him less snaps I wish they would get more speed on the field maybe we see that um, with you know Taki Taki and um, Raekwon McMillan and, you know, some of the, you know, other options that they have at the position. Um, but I just to me, it's just I think he's maximized who he is. And uh, so, you know, I and coming back from injury, I feel slightly worse. I want to see how he looks as long as he's healthy. I feel the same. Uh, so I'll put down same right now. Uh, I know that Gerard Mayo said that 
he was itching to get back onto the field. So it doesn't sound like it's too serious of an issue. We'll keep an eye on it. But I just feel the same about these linebackers. We know who they are. We know what to expect. And as long as they're healthy, they're going to give you what you expect from them. Uh, Sub linebacker, I just brought him up a moment ago, Marte Mapu. So I guess I would I would compare this to um, Mac Wilson, possibly. Um, you know, it's not certainly not apples to apples, but you know, Mac Wilson was very productive last year as a pass rusher. Um, you know, played his best ball. Um, Mapu, I'm just going off of what I've seen on the practice field, and I just. I worry about that he's too small for that position. Certainly, he's smart as hell. He's fast. But I really worry about his size of the position and whether, you know, he can, he can you know, be out there for 16, 17 games. Um, you know, he's already had injury problems in his time here. So I feel slightly worse about it. Um, but... You know, I'd really like to see the kid get some run, a lot of running camp so we can figure out exactly what he is. It's really early, so it's tough. You usually wait at least two years, if not three on rookies, right, the, after their class. So I still think we have time with Mapu to see if he if he really shows out at some point. But right now, I got to say, I feel worse. I mean, Mac Wilson was good last year. He was impactful. He helped the team. And. Mapu to me is still an idea more than a reality. I, I want to see the idea play out, but until I actually see it, it's just an idea. He could be this. He could be that. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over five million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the prize picks community today. You can now win up to a hundred times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into a thousand dollars with the finals over the hoop action doesn't stop on prize picks. Women's basketball is still heating up with stars like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese looking to make names for themselves alongside greats like Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson, you could win up to 100 times your cash watching them ball out. Just the other day, I took Caitlin Clark for more than three and a half, three points made, and Brianna Stewart for more than 23 points. Plus, I went over to baseball because you all know I like baseball. Kyle Schwarber for more than nine hitter fantasy score and Bryce, Will Bryce Miller for more than four pitcher strikeouts. It's a lot of fun. You got to get in on this. Download the prize packs, prize picks app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. That's code CLNS on prize picks for a deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Let's continue with the defense. Let's go to uh, the secondary now, Greg Christian Gonzalez. Yeah, only four games out of the kid last year. Um, but from what we saw, he, he got better with every single game. It looks like he's going to be a legit shutdown cornerback. Uh, hard not to feel a lot better about that position. Hopefully they get a full year out of him because uh, it looks like he could be a special talent. Big fan. Feel better. Stay healthy. Only going to improve. Left cornerback. Uh, for now, you have Jonathan Jones. I think th I think there's still a chance that this changes. I, I don't know if you feel the same. Yep. If, if Alex Austin continues to play and look the way he did in minicamp and training camp, Alex Austin could be your your left cornerback. But let's let's go with Jonathan Jones right now and your thoughts on him. Right. Well, I mean, it, you're not wrong with that. Um, I will say that even if he even if Alex Austin is the left cornerback. Um, depending on how many wide receivers they have on the field. I mean, normally it's two starting cornerbacks. So Jonathan Jones would be the starting cornerback. And then once they go to three wide, Jones would slide inside and Austin would come in as the, the, the third cornerback, the, the other boundary guy. Um, but you're absolutely right to say that, you know, it could, it could end up being um, slightly changed a little bit here. Um, I really like Jonathan Jones. Um, you know, I feel better about him coming back. Hopefully he's healthy. We haven't seen a whole lot of them. Um, so it might be tough to say they're going to be better there. But, um, you know, I'm just a JJ fan. And uh, so I feel better about the position. 
I feel the same about Jonathan. And, uh, you know, if Alex Austin continues to play, I'll feel better about the, the cornerback position overall. Uh, let's look at the slot, though. You've got Marcus Jones. Yep. And again, moving pieces, this could end up being Jonathan Jones with Austin in the mix or or even um, uh, the big guy. What's what's Isaiah Bolden? Um, who knows? Maybe he pops and, and he's in the mix for boundary cornerback. They could bring in a veteran boundary cornerback and they feel like they're lacking um, a little bit there. But, you know, Marcus Jones, I feel the same because I we just don't know what he is. I mean, he really hasn't shown the ability to be a, you know, starting caliber high rep cornerback in this league. There were a lot of high hopes for him coming in, being sort of like a honey badger type guy. That hasn't happened yet, but who knows? Maybe it just takes him some time. He's had the injury issues. Um, you know, I just think the the makeup, the athletic ability, all that could translate really well. Um, so I, I'm going to say about the same, but I really – I hope we get a definitive answer on Marcus Jones this year. I want him to succeed so badly. I, I, I just I want him to show the talent that I think he has, but I feel worse because he hasn't been able to stay healthy. And one of the concerns was his size. And so can he get on the field and stay on the field? Until he does that, I'm not going to feel better about him, and I'm, I'm certainly not going to feel the same because he went down with, with another injury last year. So I really want him to work. I think he's got talent, but – can't can't really do much if if you continue to be all sorts of banged up. Can't make the club in the tub, as they say. All right. Uh, before we get to the uh, safety position, I want to remind you, you can check out Boston Sports Journal. 50 bucks for the year. Bedard and company doing great work. Corrales continuing a victory lap on the Celtics and Banner 18. Uh, so go check them out. 50 bucks for the year. Also, this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. And I remind you, they got a cool free square for UFC 303 coming up. We're recording this on Friday afternoon. So tomorrow night, Saturday night, Alex Pereira has to uh, get more than half a significant strike in the square wins. So you want to check that out. Trust me when I tell you, uh, and don't forget to download that app. Use the code CLNS for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. And then you can take advantage of that Alex Pereira square. All right. Free safety, Kyle Duggar. Yeah, we don't know exactly how they're going to slot at free safety, but, you know, I, I just think Kyle Duggar is what he is. He's a really good player. He, he'll he provide some splash plays. He'll get burned a few times on touchdowns. I mean, he is what he is, so I feel about the same at the spot. I uh, actually feel better because I, I think he will play closer to the line of scrimmage more often this year, which is – you know, as we know, more of his comfort spot, his comfort zone, and he produces better in that in that area of the field. Uh, Jalen Hawkins is another guy we keep an eye on once we get to training camp because he, he got decent snaps during mini camp. So I wonder how much he'll play uh, and be involved there. But uh, I feel I feel a little bit better about Duggar. He's got his money and I think they'll play him more at the level of comfort. Jabril Peppers. Uh, the same. I mean, I, well, no, I feel better because I, I just think he's, um, I just think he's, I think he's great. I think he gets better every time he plays for the Patriots every year. Um, so I have high expectations for him and I think he's going to be one of the big leaders yeah. for this defense. And I think it's a, it's a really good thing for them. And I think a lot of people are going to follow Jabril Peppers lead, and I think that's that's a good thing for the Patriots. Love Peppers. Feel better about him this year than last year just because he was so good last year. He was one of my favorite players on that team. He's got the right personality, the right approach, and he follows it up on the field. Love Jabril Peppers. One of my favorite guys in the league, honestly, after watching him last year. He's just – he's good. Good football player, and he gets it. All right. That'll do it. Everybody enjoy your weekend. We'll be back uh, early next week, of course, 4th of July week. Greg is going to be traveling. We'll uh, we will catch up with him somewhere in Denver, at a at a location to be named, and uh, I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about. But have a great weekend and be well. <laughs>